Hi boys and girls, I'm Pastor Jim and this is what we call chapel time. And chapel time is when I get to talk to you and we can have a good time together. And we always do three things at chapel time. We read and we sing and we pray. And chapel time is always about God and how much God loves you. So the first thing I'm going to do today is read. And I'm going to read a book called The Tale of the Three Trees. One day, up on a mountaintop, three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. The first little tree looked up to the stars and said, I want to hold treasure. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious jewels. I'll be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. The second little tree looked out and saw a small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a travel I want to travel the mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I'll be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave the mountaintop at all. I want to grow so tall that when people stop and look at me, they'll raise their eyes to heaven and think about God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Well, years passed and rain came and the sun shone and the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, This tree is beautiful. It's perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest. I shall hold wonderful treasure, the first tree said. The second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree, and I shall be a strong ship for mighty kings. The third tree felt her heart sink when the last woodcutter looked her way. She looked straight and tall and pointed bravely to heaven but the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered. With a swoop of his shining axe, the third tree fell. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought her to his carpenter shop, but the carpenter fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or with treasure. She was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took her to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ship was made that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. She was too small and too weak to sail on an ocean or even a river. Instead, he was taken to a lake. Every day, he brought in loads of dead, stinky fish. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in a lumber yard. What happened? Once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted was to stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband said. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled at the starlight as the starlight shone in the smooth, sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep and the second tree quietly sailed on the lake. 
But soon, a thundering, thrashing storm arose. The tree shuddered. She knew she did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely with the wind and the rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand, and said, Peace! And the storm stopped as quickly as it has be had it as it had begun. And suddenly the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. One Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten wood pile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the third tree strong. And every time people thought about the third tree, they would think of God. And that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Now, usually I read to you from the Bible, but this time I'm reading to you, I read to you from the book, The Tale of the Three Trees, because it's about the Bible. It's not the Bible, but it tells some stories from the Bible. And all of those stories are about Jesus. Remember the first tree? It was made into a manger or what animals eat from. And if you remember at sand table at Christmas time, I told you that animals ate from a manger, and that's what they put baby Jesus into. Jesus, who is God's son, was put into a feeding trough, a trough, a manger that the animals ate from, and that's what the first tree was made into. And the second tree was made into a ship, a boat that went on the lake, and Jesus was on that boat, and the people, the, his friends were catching fish, but all of a sudden a storm rose up. Jesus was sleeping. But the friends said, Jesus, there's a storm. We're so scared. We're so afraid. Will you help us? And Jesus went up to the, to the floor of the boat and said, Peace, stop. Stop wind. Stop waves. Stop storm. And it did because Jesus is God's son and he's so powerful. And that little boat was what the second tree was made from. And then the third tree was made into a cross a tall piece of wood and then another piece of wood put together and they put Jesus on it and nailed his hands to that cross and his feet and he died there. And that is very sad. But he died there because people, you and me and everybody have done bad things and Jesus took all those bad things on himself and died. But then, like the story tells us on Sunday morning, Jesus rose up from the dead. Most, most people don't rise up from the dead, but Jesus did because he's God's son. And he left all those bad things behind and he created new life. Those bad things are gone forever. And that tree that was used for something so awful that was to kill Jesus, now is something beautiful because Jesus took all the bad things away, all the bad things I've done and you've done, he took them away on that, on that tree. And now he gives us new life and he promises that someday all the bad things will be gone and he will Take us to a wonderful place where everything is good and everyone finds their dreams and nothing bad is left. And that's the wonderful story about Jesus. And he takes away the bad things we've done. So that is, reminds me of a song I want to sing because we always read and sing and pray and sing is the middle thing. So let's sing. And it goes like this. God has blotted them out. I'm happy and glad and free. God has blotted them out. Let's turn to Isaiah and see. Chapter 44, 22 and 3. 
He's blotted them out, and now I can shout. For that means me. And that tells us that God took away, took away all the bad things so that we can be so happy because he loves us so much to take away all the bad. Let's sing it again. God has blotted them out. I'm happy and glad and free. God has blotted them out. I'll turn to Isaiah and see. Chapter 44, 22 and 3. He's blotted them out, and now I can shout, for that means me. And you know the other song we sing at chapel time? I think every time we have chapel time is Jesus Loves Me. And it goes like this. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. And you know why when we sing the word Jesus, we go like this? Because they use those nails right here on his hands to nail him to that cross. And that's one of the ways we remember Jesus. Let's sing that one one more time. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, and Jesus loves you, girls and boys. And that is a wonderful thing, that God loves us so much that Jesus died for us. And God is so powerful that Jesus rose up from the dead. And that's what Easter's all about. You know, Easter's coming soon. And Easter's the day we celebrate that Jesus rose up from, from death and invites us into a wonderful new life. Will you pray now with me? Because that's the third thing we do. Praying is just talking to God. And you can repeat the words I say, and but say them to God. And it's usually helpful to maybe close, put your hands together like this, fold your hands together, and um, close your eyes so you're not distracted. Because talking to God isn't always easy, but it's always wonderful. So, Pray with me. Just say the same things I say, but say them to God. He's always listening. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. And thank you for living again and raising up. And thank you for the promise of life with you forever and ever. Help me to love you. Amen. It was great to be with you today, boys and girls. I hope you have a wonderful day and a really wonderful Easter, remembering that Jesus died for you and lives for you forever and wants you to live with him forever.